Hello and welcome to today's webinar where we're going to explore how Cypher LMS can help unlock your L&D challenges in a changing workplace. My name is David Richter, I'm the Director of Marketing at Cypher. Uh, if you're not familiar with Cypher, Cypher is a specialist provider of online HR, learning, payroll and recruitment software through our HCM platform Cypher Connect. And the thing that sets Cypher Connect apart is we don't just provide seamless integration across our own suite of software, but we integrate with specialist solutions across the wider people management ecosystem. And a great success story of who Cypher integrates with is Digits. Um, Cypher had partnered with Digits since 2018 to provide integrated HR and learning solutions to our customers. Uh, in fact, the partnership went really, really well. Uh, so well, in fact, that uh, by September this year, Cypher uh, had agreed to acquire Digits. Uh, Digits continues to operate as a standalone business and works with large enterprise organizations to deliver fully bespoke learning solutions to the likes of Renault, Kia, The Telegraph and B&Q. One of the advantages this brings is we're now able to benefit from the wealth of in-house expertise at Digits when it comes to creating engaging and effective online learning and development programs for our customers. So I'm really pleased to be joined today by Toby Gilchrist and Charlotte Bull from the customer experience team at Digits and Andrea Dancy, uh, an account development manager at Cypher. A really warm welcome to all of you. Um, so, on to the agenda. Uh, today we are going to be looking at navigating the new normal, specifically why training is important for career flexibility and how L&D addresses the challenges of today. Uh, we're going to move on then to look at functionality that can help create engaging and effective learning programs through an online learning management system. And then finally we'll cover how you continu can continue your learning and development activity. Uh, during the webinar, please do send in your questions, comments and queries via the control panel on your screen. And if you do miss anything, not to worry, everyone who has registered for the webinar will receive a link tomorrow to an on-demand version that you can watch anytime. Or if you want to, you can share it with your colleagues if you think they'll be, uh, be, be interested. Before I hand over to Andrea, uh, we're going to kick off with a quick poll. Uh, you can see the question on your screen. I'm just going to launch the poll now. Uh, and the question is, how effective do you feel your current L&D activity is at developing your workforce? Now, you've got multiple options that you can select, and you can select more than one in this particular poll. And the options are, you've got actually no idea how effective it is. Uh, maybe your L&D activity is really just a box ticking exercise. Um, perhaps it's more focused on compliance rather than development. Maybe you think it's highly effective at developing your people, or maybe, unfortunately, it's ineffective, in your opinion, at developing your people. Uh, and while we're waiting for people to submit their responses, Andrew, do you want to just talk us through your expectations, um, and particularly with regards to the impact that COVID might have had on these uh, over the last year? Sure. I mean, I think there's, you know, there has been a sort of greater importance of remote learning and sort of thinking about, you know, how the learning and development programs can support a changing workplace at the moment with the current pandemic. So I think this uh, time has been taken by a lot of organisations to sort of look at their existing um, business structures and, and skills within the organisation and have a think about how they can, you know, develop their talent and, and use learning, you know, learning and development programs to adapt the business to the changing context. So, um, so I think at the moment a lot of people are starting to see it as a bit of a box ticking exercise or perhaps don't have a really consolidated program and are perhaps looking to then you know refine their strategy in that department so it'll be interesting to see what the results are brilliant thank you very much right we've had a lot of responses i'm just going to close the poll and i'll share the results um and actually i don't think they, they differ too much from what you were describing there andrea um don't know if there's any surprises is i think very good news that nobody has said their current l d activity is ineffective at developing their people um i think perhaps the uh, the first result i have no idea maybe indicates the difficulties the challenges that we have in demonstrating uh, the effectiveness and, and maybe sometimes the roi of the activity and uh, i expect we're going to cover some of that uh, in the presentations to come uh, right so i'm just going to hide this poll uh, and then uh, like to hand over to you, Andrea, um, so you can look at some of the challenges with the new normal uh, and how an effective L&D program can address them. Great, thanks, David. So, hi, I'm Andrea Dancy. As David mentioned, I'm the, one of the account development managers here at Cipher, but also an LMS specialist within the team. So, I think, yeah, I mean, we've all heard the the term the new normal, and that's becoming sort of part of our day day to day vernacular. Um, but what does that mean? And and of course, that's throwing up a number of challenges within um, our day to day work. So 
you know, obviously, you know, the work-life balance can now be difficult to achieve with a lot of us working remotely, um, working longer hours, but, you know, of course, there's then no commute and shift to daily routines. So that can obviously present us with some opportunities. Um, the home versus working in the office um, paradigm is also, you know, throwing up a few challenges. So how do we monitor performance? How do we support our employees um, in those contexts? Um, you know, how do we engage employees, particularly, you know, in their day-to-day -day work and how can L&D support that? Um, and, you know, what are the sort of technology limitations and digital skills that are needed to, to work remotely versus within an office-based environment? Of course, employee wellbeing and mental health, we all know that that's been a really common topic throughout the pandemic of, you know, how we are supporting our employees with that and making sure everyone is okay day to day. Um, but in the wider context, there's obviously changes to the business um, and strategy, which means that you need more flexibility within the workforce. Um, we're seeing, you know, organisations are having to uh, downsize as a result of the pandemic or just adapt and change their structures to be able to meet the new ways of working um, and, you know, to be able to operate effectively within the current uh, context. Um, and I think one of the major things we are starting to see throughout the whole last sort of nine months or so is that it really is starting to accelerate digital change for those organisations who, you know, either haven't started or at the early stages of that. Um, so I think, you know, there's a lot of, you know, news out there about how, you know, how important training is for that career flexibility and and what we're sort of seeing is that over this time that employee support and talent retention is really critical for helping organizations to adapt and recover from these kinds of um, scenarios that we're facing in 2020. Um, but interestingly a recent CERPD survey found that only one in five organizations have increased training as a consequence of the pandemic um, despite the importance of that being in place. Um, LinkedIn found that one in two talent developers, uh, talent developers um, say that getting their managers to make learning a priority for their teams is a major challenge. Um, and Fosway Group saw that 71% of organisations um, saw an increase of demand for digital learning from end users, which I, I'm sure you know a lot of you probably don't find as a surprising statistic given the context that we're in. So I guess I'm thinking with all that in mind, how can learning and development address the challenges of today, um, you know, and, and within those sort of challenges that I outlined before. So thinking about the work life challenges, we do have opportunities now to really engage our employees and, and give them that sort of learner autonomy through, you know, through the use of something like an LMS that you can consolidate that learning. It's also important that we think about how do we, you know, um, use enable them to embrace this new normal um, and book time out for learning and development in their diary. So if they do have more in the time in the day because they're not commuting and so forth, is that an opportunity now to kind of reset the boundaries of where learning and development fits into their day-to-day -day activities? Um, in terms of the home versus office working, you know, there is obviously a need for more blended learning, sort of that available anytime, anywhere learning so, um, so that employees can access what they need. But there's also, I think, a real need for training managers in some instances how to support and manage home working employees. And I know this has been a, a challenge that a number of our customers have found of like, well, how do we manage performance? How, how can we be assured that our employees are supported, but we're also keeping an eye on what they're doing without sort of micromanaging? So this is where, you know, an LMS can come into play of, of helping them um, with, that, with that side of things. Um, and it's, I guess, important not to underestimate the importance of the human element. Um, the pandemic has really highlighted this so that, you know, you're looking at how you can blend instructor-led training or social learning versus e-learning to improve engagement on that. In terms of employee being, uh, well-being and mental health, um, you know, it's about reconsidering how learning and development pathways can include more social learning and increase that employee interaction. You know, is mentoring and coaching something that should be part of the training? And, you know, are there well-being and coping strategies that can be part of that pathway? In terms of organisational change, um, this is really an opportunity to help employees discover new career paths, encourage staff to upskill and build into um, their talent management process. This can help minimise redundancies, minimise knowledge loss within the company, perhaps even find new revenue streams if you can really tap into the skills that you have within the organisation and use them in different ways um, across, across the organisational structures. Um, we're also seeing a lot of companies are offering training programmes to upskill new candidates to enable access to a wider talent pool in the market. So there are a lot of people out there looking for work, but do they have the right skills for the roles that you need? So how can your learning development program assist with that? Um, and I did mention digital change, obviously accelerating that, that change um, to discover efficiencies and new ways of working. So, you know, how can you embrace that through upskilling? So what kind of support and training can you offer employees to, to come on board with that, that transformation and feel comfortable with the new digital technologies that are coming through?
So lots of opportunities there, and hopefully, you know, going forward, we can address that with some of the um, the functionality that we have within Cipher LMS that can help you to sort of um, embrace those opportunities as part of your L&D strategy. So, um, so now we're going to move into looking at the um, the features of Cipher LMS, and I'm going to hand over to my colleague Toby and Charlotte um, to to talk about all of this within that context. Thanks, Andrea. So yeah, good morning, everyone. So Toby Gilchrist, the Customer Experience Manager at Digits, mainly responsible for working with my clients to understand their their learning strategy and ideally bring that to life within within the platform. So kind of talking around that user experience side of things, it's uh, I noticed on that poll, um, the percentage of the high percentage of you were referring to um, predominantly the learning you're putting together is for compliance. And that's kind of the sort of the, the go to norm with the learning management system is here is a list of compliance activities you need to complete uh, to make sure you're compliant. But um, we're seeing sort of a shift within utilizing learning management systems now for all this kind of learning experience, um, kind of reflecting those similar platforms we're used to seeing nowadays, the, the Netflix, the um, you know, LinkedIn learning, sort of, uh, you know, these, this kind of self-discovery, if you like, a catalogue of learning activities where you can go and discover skills, knowledge, behaviours um, you want to work on for yourself. So it's more of a sort of a pull learning instead of a push learning. But to facilitate that, we can actually leverage some features in the platform and have a flexible homepage, the first page you land on on the platform, um, working with data that we're putting through from the Cypher HR platform, reflecting the organization structure. We therefore now know where you work in the organization. Therefore, we can use that data to present relevant content to you. So you're kind of not landing on a one size fits all landing page that everyone sees. We actually know the last activity you completed. Um, we know the sort of the trending activities in your uh, particular part of the organization. So using all these tools, you can really build something nice and bespoke and custom and rapidly adjust on the fly to things like COVID, uh, present us with a bit of a challenge. We can now sort of instantly put a message on the homepage, letting people know how we're going to facilitate training going forward. Um, so yeah, you can make those just-in-time updates on the page. So making it really easy for the user not necessarily um, having to sort of, you know, uh, sorry, just up on that back slide there with uh, not having to sort of go through the, the menu and find those options. It's, it's just really obvious, you know, you've got your quick link tiles just going straight into the relevant learning for you, going into your latest rewards and, and uh, all those gamified features we'll talk about more a bit later. Um, just go into the learning library of the catalog of activities. So you just got these nice, simple signposts uh, off to areas of the platform. Uh, and like I mentioned, those carousels where, you know, like I said, just in time, I just want to feature these courses when GDPR was a hot topic. Let's put those GDPR related activities into the uh, into the carousel, feature that on the home page and make it really obvious to the user what they've got to complete. And then finally, just on the, this kind of uh, unique home page, it's um, where we can turn on and off items or have different home pages for users. If you have to obviously push something like compliance, uh, we have this real obvious progress widget. Here is the items, the activities you have to complete, whether it's e-learning, virtual classrooms, uh, video-based activities, any type of media we can learn from, um, typically hosted on the program uh, and presents itself in this progress widget, letting you know how far you are through your, uh, your compliance activities. So you can still have that compliance um, deliverable, uh, sort of blended in with this more sort of learning experience. So yeah, moving on to the the next slide, we've got, um, again, just building on this this user experience. Um, we have these, you know, sort of adopting features, um, you know, from games, that gamified approach that we'll talk a bit more later when Charlotte gets onto her slides. But um, instead of that typical program of activities that users are used to, here is a list of activities you need to complete. Uh, again, e-learning PDFs, face-to-face uh, -face events when we get back to that time, virtual classrooms. We just, kind of, again, going with that theme of user experience, make it really engaging for users coming into the platform. 
we can string all these acti activities together into these visual learning journeys. So really engaging, really, um, you know, sort of uh, gamified for the user to make it obvious. I've completed pin one of uh, one of eight. I'm in progress on the other activities. I get access to my certificate when I've completed it, but um, just really visually obvious to the user how far they are through their program. And these images can be easily swapped out for something really bespoke. So it's a real nice example where working with B&Q, we um, did some design work to have this sort of nice onboarding journey, starting at your home, working through your diversity training, um, information about where you're going to be working. And then the last image of the journey is the picture of the B&Q store. You now have the skills, knowledge and behavior, behaviors ready for day one at B&Q store. Um, but like I say, there can be images can be swapped out, pin colors can be changed. You can make it really bespoke to the organization. And then we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but where um, you've got kind of, obviously we have to adapt just in time to the current climate we're in. Um, typically where one of those pins would have been linking off to a classroom event where the platform will facilitate booking confirmations, uh, emails, booking reminders, joining instructions. Unfortunately, we can't deliver that kind of face to face experience currently. So you can quite easily just flip that face to face activity over to a virtual classroom event. So uh, with the platform, we can link off to you know, Teams, um, Adobe Connect, uh, all these platforms where you have that link to the virtual classroom event. Uh, and you can swap it out for that type of um, uh, facilitated event. And then when we're good to go back to the face to face world again, it can be swapped back to that type of activity. So very easy for learning and development teams, um, you know, learning tech administrators just to come in, swap their images out, swap the activities out, add more activities to their journeys. And then when you require more, a bit more handholding where that sort of visual gamified journey might not give enough context. Uh, the one behind there is the, what we call our guide style of visual learning journey, where you can add sort of text and images and, and really handhold your learners through a pre-boarding program, leadership and management program. Um, so again, we're focusing on that organization structure. Where do you work in the organization? Here's a relevant program for you. And we can deliver that program with a nice um, sort of context rich uh, visual pathway. So yeah, really personalized, brings all those blended activities together, really nice and gamified and engaging. Um, so a great way to uh, yeah piece a program together for whatever it is you're trying to deliver. So then on to the next one, we have um, a very powerful tool within the platform for skills analysis where we can actually push an assessment to a to a learner um, we know where you work in the organization here is a relevant assessment for you so again it's where we're stepping away from that here is your compliance learning activities that a lot of you flagged within that poll actually give me a bit of a steer for the type of activities that um, i need to complete for my for my job role so this skills analysis assessment will be pushed to a user it's all nicely hosted on a page that's fully content managed. So as an administrator, you can edit the menus page, swap the images out, lay it out how you like. Um, but hosted on there is this link to the skills analysis assessment for a learner to complete. So you get these nice visual sliders where uh, you rate yourself against a competency framework. You know, I don't really possess this skill in leadership and management. I don't possess this skill in, in time management. Um, interview skills aren't, aren't so great um, and then from that assessment when it's completed automatically pushes over to your line manager in the platform so again kind of using that lovely data from the cypher hr platform we know who your manager is let's let's therefore notify them um, they then complete the assessment on behalf of the user then you start building up this nice spider chart diagram of where do you rate yourself against your manager's rating uh, and then the final step on the, the assessment process is to ping that assessment out to your peers your colleagues direct reports um, they will then get access to that assessment fill it in on behalf of yourself capturing all that really good feedback about where they feel they rate you against the uh, competency framework 
Um, but the end result is these two spider charts on the page. So as a user, I can come in, see where I've rated myself and see an overall rating of where my peers and manager and uh, everyone has rated me against the competency framework. And you might see in this example, it's a bit of a, a disjoint. Um, and then you get that breakdown of manager, peers, direct reports, etc. As soon as three of one type have come back and filled in that assessment, um, it will start building that, that spider chart up as we want to keep it nice and anonymous. Um, but the idea is then it just fuels these great one-to-one -one conversations through your review process. You've got some real tangible data to, to fuel a really good structured um, conversation in your review. Um, all of this information could be exported as a as a PDF. So, you know, print off a PDF, bring it to your review. Um, but we're actually doing something with that information where we've identified a gap. So teamwork skills aren't so hot. Um, management leadership skills are quite low. We can then link to learning activities from that. Again, whether it's e-learning modules or a classroom event, this is the recommended activity for you as you've uh, fallen below the benchmark for that competency. So ideally we're kind of plugging that gap and, and proactively doing something about it. There's even the ability to, um, you know, you can kind of see this as a, as a whole. So over the whole organization, you can see right the whole HR department's fantastic in teamwork. Um, there's a massive gap in teamwork in, in finance. Let's potentially use some of the social features we'll talk about later to use some coaching and mentoring. Let's facilitate some coaching and mentoring use skills we've got. We've identified there's strong teamwork skills in HR. Let's bring some of those guys over to finance and uh, use resources we've got to, to skill them up. Um, and you can even, even with that um, analysis, kind of see you know the job role above and, and kind of uh, flag yourself against those skills and see how you fare in the, the next grade uh, of your career, potentially. Um, but yeah, moving on to the, the, the next slide. Uh, and I shall then pass over to, to Charlotte. Thanks, Toby. So I am Charlotte Bull. I am the ex uh, Customer Experience Executive at Digits. And similarly to Toby, I help the clients utilise the features of the platform and to reflect the business learning and development needs. So uh, social learning obviously has been quite an important thing this year to kind of connect everyone together again after we've been kind of separated by the coronavirus. So with the social features of this platform, um, you're able to join maybe a virtual workshop or a piece of e-learning and then get assigned a social group that you can join as a learner and um, have those follow up chats with the people that you um, were in those virtual workshops with. So you can kind of really stay connected with the people that want to learn the same things as you and upskill the same ways that you do. Um, and I'm saying you on the kind of learner side of things, just so um, that we can address the people that will be using the platform as well as um, admins of the platform. So there's more of a sense of connection around the learning in the platform rather than it just being, okay, I'm just gonna go on, complete my learning and then, um, not talk to anyone about it. So another good feature is obviously the coaching and mentoring. And this is something that's coming up quite a lot um, in client requirements lately. So it's another way to stay connected, but also to help other people. And I think this year, helping other people has been something that's just been really put out there for, for everyone with obviously everything with the NHS and things like that. Um, helping other people has been quite a big social, social push. Um, so why not bring that into learning with coaching and mentoring where you can volunteer yourself as a mentor, share your skills and the skills can be changed by the administrator of the platform to reflect um, business skills. So, for example, if you are in automotive, maybe there's a few technician skills that you can share with other people and the administrator of the platform can put down um, technician skills as a skill that someone can choose. So you, if you volunteer yourself as a mentor, and people that want to upskill in those certain um, places that you've, you've said that you're skillful in can choose you as their mentor and you can book meetings in with them um, and stay connected with that person. 
So on the other side, you can become a mentee. Maybe there's somewhere, somewhere that you need upskilling and you can search for a mentor to take you through and um, help you upskill in those areas that maybe you don't have as much skills in. Um, yeah, so it's just a fact of sharing all your knowledge, staying connected and uh, keeping, keeping the social aspect of work and learning alive. Um, another way of the platform kind of keeping everyone engaged and keeping everyone um, connected is with the rules um, engine that we've got. So if we go to the next slide, um, there's a way that you can actually send engagement emails out to your um, workforce just without you having to go onto the system every day and send them out. And um, this will automatically send out uh, engagement emails to the learners to remind them to come back on. Um, it can remind them for refresher training. And another way that you can um, utilize this feature is with those engaging journeys that Toby was talking about a bit earlier, you can lock and unlock courses. So it may be that obviously we've found out that a lot of you guys use compliance. Um, and it may be that in a year's time, you want to lock and unlock some courses um, so that, that, that the learners get a notification to say, come in, let's do your refresher training on your compliance and um, you can unlock the next course and the next course and um, so on and so forth. And then after a year, you could even set it to, um, to mandatory and required. There are a lot of different status changes that you can do within this rules engine. So it's a great way to kind of get people back in, get people engaged, and also just to remind people that um, they need to do their compliance and keep everyone compliant as well. Uh, it kind of brings all of the aspects into the, the platform. If we go to the next slide. So we've also got uh, rewards and engagement, um, and obviously kind of heading back to the social sort of element, and something that actually we did in Digits um, this year is that we utilized our own platform. We use our platform for our compliance training and for other training. And um, we utilized it this year to create a quiz to keep everyone's morales up. And on our homepage, we popped on a leaderboard. We got um, the point system all allocated to the assessment builder. Um, our HR director, she created assessments every single day. And we went on and completed those little mini quizzes and competed against each other just to give us like that little bit of teamwork was still there that little bit of kind of um although we were all very disconnected with the fact that we were all told to stay away from each other and stay at home um we were all able to get on to the platform and every day realize that actually oh someone's beating me i need to do the quiz tomorrow and some people forgot to do them and then had to do two the next day um, but yeah, that was a really good way that we actually kept our like business morale up. Um, but also it got us into the platform and got us engaged. Um, so we know that that works for, if it worked for us, it can work for other aspects of learning. It may be that um, you actually physically reward your clients, your, your clients, your workforce with a badge when they receive a badge on the system. So a badge can pop up on the system and say, you've received your compliance essentials badge. And it may be that part of part of your um, learning and development program may be that you send them um, a small badge that they can have or something along those sort of lines to keep them engaged as well. Um, so yeah, so that's the great ways that you can use gamification um, and you can develop that in how your business wants to. Thanks, Charlotte. So yeah, kind of been talking about continuing your continuing your um, LNG LNG journeys. So yeah, I think sort of um, where I've seen success with clients is where they've kind of branded and marketed their learning strategy. Where even within the platform name, it's not called Academy or the Learning Portal. It's uh, Jardine Motors Group, as an example, referred to their platform as Ollie, um, so which stands for Online Learning Innovation and this works really well. It's, you know, when it does, again, referring to compliance, have you done your compliance training on Ollie? It's, it's um, have you, you know, seen the new digital ninja, ninja uh, programs on Ollie? It just gives it a bit of an identity. And it's really sort of feeding into that learning culture. I think Jardine has seen real success with this platform where 
it starts from the top down. The leadership team are uh, heavily involved within the utilization of the platform. And then, you know, if your manager's very active within the platform and your manager's manager's very active within the platform, that culture just is very self-fulfilling. It just, this is a very heavily utilized platform. Um, some of our partner content is hosted on this platform and they've never seen so many hits on their activities um, of all the uh, LMS providers they partner with. Um, because on, um, Jardine just do a fantastic job of, of marketing their, their learning strategy. Uh, so one um, sort of deliverable they had to uh, had to put together was uh, typical IT skills, where very typically you'd you'd kind of pick some champions and you'd call them champions and you'd uh, pick a number of people and skill them up in um, IT skills, Office three six five, and you'd refer to it as that. You know, come along, champions, to the IT skills workshops. We're going to you, skill you up in IT to then uh, push these these skills down to the organisation. They chose not to take that approach. They refer to it as digital ninjas. So 70 people were kind of rewarded. The most active people in the platform were rewarded with this honor of becoming a, a digital ninja. And they had sort of this retro game style using the visual, visual learning journeys to kind of put together this funky little gamified retro game where you are this digital ninja character and you're working through your Microsoft Teams training, your Microsoft Excel training, um, but again, they're not referring to it as that. Um, and this created, created a really good buzz. People don't just land in the platform. They did a really good job of, you know, again, marketing it, putting posters out there, sending out notifications, utilizing the rules engine that Charlotte was referring to, to notify users to come in. And again, it was only for a select group of people, 70 people within the organization. So latching onto that organization data, we can just make sure the right people are seeing the right journey and receiving the right notifications. So really sort of custom to them. Um, so yeah, it's relevant. Um, it it incentivizes the employees because everyone wants to kind of be part of this elite group, if you like. Um, they were rewarded with those badges and gamified elements and went up on leaderboards. Um, so yeah, kind of then moving on to a, another example where the Telegraph, didn't choose to call it the um, you know, leadership and management program, which we're quite used to hearing, or the talent program. Uh, the whole idea of this uh, program was to be a better boss. It's kind of the clues in the name. So uh, the Be A Better Boss program was, uh, was created. Again, some real nice visuals using that visual learning journey editor, really on brand, really specific to the Telegraph brand, which is obviously quite a strong brand with those lovely greens. But, um, bringing in that mix of media of watching a launch video from the leadership team. So again, getting your leadership team really involved, capturing that asset. Once you've got it, you've got it. We know these the leadership team is always a, a busy resource to get hold of. So you've got that resource. You can use it time and time again. Uh, puts everything into context of the program. So, you know, why, why we're utilizing this in the, in the first place, using the old Simon Sinek idea of start with a why. Uh, people need to know why. They're embracing in this be a better be a better be a better boss program before they uh, undertake their journey, and then facilitating when it was face to face classroom events, it linked off to all the booking tools to go onto these events. Uh, but again, it just it just really works. It's like I say, it's not the leadership program. It's uh, just giving it some identity, uh, using the marketing skills to really get a bit of a buzz uh, around the platform. So I think they they there's two really good examples that have, I've seen personally work really well. Um, so staying strong to the brand, giving it an identity, giving the platform a name uh, that lands with people and kind of getting that top down leadership team really embracing the platform and incentivizing people for using the platform as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks, Toby, Charlotte and Andrew. That was that was really enjoyable. Enjoy, really enjoyed those presentations. Thank you. Um, it's now time for us to answer some of your questions, so do please send them in using the questions function in the webinar control panel. Um, we've had a couple come in already. Whilst I'm waiting for a few more just to come in, um, just wanted to give a couple of anecdotes uh, that the presentations caused me to remember about the impact of gamification and instant progress. There's been two that have affected me today already. Um, the first one was brushing my teeth. I inadvertently stopped my electric toothbrush at one minute 59 and thought 
damn, I'm not going to get five stars on my little counter for that. I haven't done it for two minutes. So started it again for another second. And then the other was I was a little bit late in dropping my daughter off at school this morning because she was desperate to top the leaderboard of their doodle maths program that they're using to encourage a bit of mental arithmetic with them. Um, and sure enough, she she ended up topping the leaderboard. She was desperate to do so to the point of she'd figured out how far away her competitors were, were from their homes to the schools. And if she could leave a little bit later than them, she was bound to finish top of that leaderboard for the day. So it is an incredibly effective tactic at encouraging people to uh, undertake learning and development activity. Um, right, so got a, like I said, a few questions have come in already. Um, one is gonna be product based I think looking at this so it's asking does the system work on the Citrix platform I don't know if anyone uh, Toby Charlotte or Andrew is able to answer that one Absolutely. might be we need to get back to them yeah so it's the kind of the beauty of it is um you know it's a cloud web based platform so um, pretty much the, the the bare minimum requirement for the platform is a web browser um, ideally kind of a, a modern browser I think Internet Explorer is uh, fading away now thank God but um, yeah just you know log into a browser um, uh, actually coming through from the Cypher platform straight through to uh, the learning platform with the Cypher platform being browser-based as well. But obviously Citrix is kind of the portal to the browser beforehand. So um, yeah, it's just a case of going into your Citrix environment, loading up the web browser, and then coming through to uh, coming through to the platforms. Um, I think the only thing I've personally noticed with, the, with Citrix, because I had the joys of working in public sector for a number of years and we had to use the Citrix environment. It's just when you really want to utilize animation and video, when you get down to the content level, that's where sometimes you kind of want to uh, smile at the IT department to crank up the, the hardware. I think we, we call them like Z terms or the terminals that run Citrix. Sometimes when you get down to a video or e-learning sort of animated piece of content, that's where you might need a bit more gubbins in your Citrix environment, but platform's all good. But uh, that's the only thing I'd flag, really. Just work with your IT teams to uh, make sure you can run rich media on those platforms. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I had one question asked about the skills analysis section and, and whether you can actually see the improvement over time. Currently not, but it is um, something we're referring to on the roadmap. It's the idea that you kind of have these points in time of, you know, um, in 2020, I kind of rated myself here and uh, I was a little bit low in teamwork. Then in 20, 2021, as a, ideally as a result of completing activities, there was actually a, an improvement in that skill. So that is something we're currently talking about, but uh, not quite there yet. I guess the, the workaround for that is you are able to export the results at this moment in time. So if you, if you wanted to export your results from the most recent um, analysis and save that against your documents in um, your, your HR system that's or, or, or anywhere really you could you're well able to do that and refer back to it in the future but yeah absolutely that's um, kind of what Telegraph do at the moment they you know export that, that PDF and um, there's actually a work folder in the platform as well so you can store it within your the work folder in the in the uh, LMS um, and like you say you have then got a record of all those exports potentially might have changed role as well so there will be a different assessment so you can keep a, a back catalogue of your PDFs of all the data. Great, thank you. Um, had one question asked about how do you manage the launch of a new L&D programme? Um, Andrew, I might pick on you for this one. You've been quiet so far. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, this comes back to sort of Toby's point about sort of marketing your course and it's it's about sort of creating that learning culture. So one of our customers, actually United Welsh, has had a really good example of this, that they were, they were looking at their learning and development programs, which were quite disjointed across the organisation, and they were really keen to create a strong learning culture across their staff. So one thing they wanted to do is use the, use the LMS to kind of um, allow learners to take ownership of that, um, that learning, but then they helped to kind Kind of engage them by sending out like weekly emails on topics just to kind of get build a bit of excitement and and you know keep it at the, the front of everyone's minds and i believe with all their furlough staff at the time as well they sent out a flyer to all their staff because obviously they couldn't communicate through the work emails um they sent them out flyers with you know 
ways they could engage with the e-learning on the LMS and just enable them to take that training over time. So I think it's really about looking at your sort of internal comms channels and sort of having a thinking about how can you, you know, continue to communicate relevant learning to different parts of the business um, and, and also use some of those gamification elements as well to create leaderboards. So like Charlotte's example with, you know, having the quiz every day and, and creating that sort of connected engagement. Um, there's lots of different tools in there and, and different initiatives that companies have used to kind of um, keep that learning at front of mind. So, yeah, I think it's very much about creating a culture of making time for learning, but then using some of your comms channels to kind of highlight the benefits of that learning and where people can go and find relevant learning for, for their day-to-day -day, um, development needs. Great. Thank you. Um, Charlotte and Toby, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add to that point. Yeah, I think um, yeah, one thing. I'm, I'm sorry, Charlotte, you go. That's all right. Um, you can utilize the the rules engine as well in this sort of case where um, if you've got a program coming up, you can send out reminders for that. Um, and once it's launched, send out a, a reminder email to say we've launched this new program. Come and come and try it out. Um, so that, yeah, there are things in the system that you can utilize as well as your internal comms um, within your business too. I think I've seen success where it's it's starting small. It's um, not trying to go big bang with every feature, with every part of the platform for every type of learning strategy delivered on day one. It's kind of quite overwhelming. Uh, there's, there's kind of a digital change piece to consider as well. Of you know, it's a brand new platform. It's new to everyone. Don't scare them off on the on go live. Where where I've seen success is where clients potentially will start with just onboarding or just induction. And then they'll feed in the sort of leadership management program um, sort of six months down the line. And just kind of drip feed those features a bit, bring people with you, um, sort of, you know, bring them along that digital change journey, if you like, um, piece by piece and, and don't overwhelm them. Brilliant. Thank you. Actually, whilst we were talking about this, we've had um, a question where it's more, more a comment actually from one of our customers, um, Bob at uh, United Welsh, who, who um, he's, he's been kind enough to offer sharing uh, a flyer that they've used to uh, help launch uh, their their Cipher LMS system uh, internally, and they, they've been extremely successful in in getting user adoption there. Um, Bob was actually kind enough uh, a few months ago to lead a webinar as a case study um, about uh, their experience. So we'll include a link uh, to to that webinar when we follow up with everybody tomorrow. But uh, Bob, if you're still listening, thank you very much. That was a great offer. Um, had another question. This one's maybe uh, slightly thorny. Um, had had a question about how you can avoid uh, disincentivizing people with the gamification and, in particular, leaderboards if they're never top. Does it does it risk creating a sort of atmosphere of <laughs> toxic competition uh, and affecting team dynamics? Yeah, we've, we've had um, we've kind of had this uh, crop up with with Jardine actually where. Um, it was actually, I mean, there's two things here. It's where the L&D lead was obviously testing out all the modules and completing all the training to make sure it was ready for, for go live. They kind of instantly became top of the leaderboard and didn't give his team a, a, a chance to actually get on the leaderboard. So that's got an interesting one around gamification. But where um, what's quite clever about the features is you can configure them just to kind of go down the levels a little bit. So instead of the leaderboard being the whole organization where that kind of makes it quite unachievable. You can kind of configure that to say, actually just go down to department level or team level, um, which kind of makes it then a bit more achievable to jump up the leaderboard. Um, but inevitably, you know, you do find it. Some people just struggle to, to engage. They're always, you know, busy to get into the platform and complete things. The example that Charlotte gave, I think was quite good. I think, yeah, 90% of us, of us, I'd say, were engaged in that assessment. Um, but I think where the 10% weren't quite as engaged, I think that's where the culture piece comes in. It's, it's not just a, you know, drag people to the platform. You have to kind of instill that culture to make learning yeah. part of what you do. Put, put that hour a week in your diary um, for, for learning something a little bit extra. It's, yeah, I think that's where that, that, that will pay off. I think as well, it, it, it depends um, as the outcomes for those leaderboards as well, because if, if you were to say offer brilliant the, the person who finishes top of the leaderboard for this year um gets a whatever five thousand pound bonus if you don't get that if you miss out by one point you're going to be pretty cheesed off and if you if you are somewhere near the bottom of that leaderboard from quite early on um you're just probably going to give up if, if your only motivation is trying to achieve a bonus so i certainly wouldn't start offering 
valuable incentives or anything like that because i think that that will probably be detrimental to the efficacy of the learning program um but the the other point is just if if people aren't engaging with the learning activity it's prob probably indicative of a deeper issue that's worth exploring and just just finding out why it is that they're not it might be that they just don't have the capacity to to engage with it um but it might be that there's there's something else going on um, that means they're sort of disengaged from their role or or, uh, or their role at the organization I think um, it's worth sorry carry on I think it's worth noting as well like everyone learns differently and everyone engages very differently so you can't expect that everyone will be so engaged with the leaderboard if you suddenly pop it onto your um, system however there has been it has been shown that it does work for for some people so I just think it's one of those things that um, like you say the work culture of of maybe the incentives and not making them too dramatic um, is a good way of, of kind of keeping everyone sort of engaged with it, but it will not engage everyone. Um, you can't guarantee that ever. Yeah, had a suggestion come in actually about um, what one way uh, an organization's helped level the playing field a bit um, because they have a lot of night staff who were able to run through every module every single night. Um, they, they just ended up disabling the leaderboard function because it, it wasn't quite fair. Um, had a few questions come in about the product now. Um, one is whether it's possible to switch between the administrator view and the user view um, in, in the system. It might be that we need to follow up um, after the webinar to get some more specific details for that one. I don't know. Well, you can you can actually as an administrator, you can impersonate a user. So if you did if you wanted to be like having a look at what a particular user is seeing or, or to have a look at completion rates or just, to, you know, just to go in and see what their system looks like, then you can impersonate that user. But it can't be mm. obviously done the other way around of a user impersonating admin role, for example. So depending on what rights you have, you can go in and see the view of, of what a user would look like. So I'm not sure if that kind of answers the question or if we do need to get some more specifics like David suggested. Okay well we can we can follow up after the webinar thank you. Um, I had a question about whether the platform allows for multi-tenancy uh, specifically would like to uh, log in portal for both internal and external learners. I'm going to deflect that one to it's Tony, Toby and Charlotte I think. <laughs> yes no right I mean technically possible I mean the, the ideal world is that we have all the users in in cypher hr they're all part of the organization they all get that great experience of single signing on to the learning platform um technically users can be added um through the interface it's just that kind of waving that flag of that's then not managed by the safer the cypher hr platform you then got a bit of a manual job to mark them as lever or you know kick them out if they're not supposed to have access anymore so yeah, the dream world is it's all managed through Cypher HR, but technically um, you can add users manually in the platform as well. Great, thank you. Uh, someone has asked um, for a bit of clarity um, whether all the learning content can be held within the LMS, and if so, what formats can be added to it? So yeah, quite a few formats. So yeah, that's it. That is the dream that all activities are hosted under a one-stop shop um, of the platform. So the idea of you know uh, video files, YouTube videos, Vimeo videos, it will quite cleverly uh, what's called SCORM wrap those assets. So if it's a five minute video, it will then trigger a complete when they've got to the fifth minute and that will populate into your training history and reports, etc. Um, you've got audio files, e-learning files, whether it's SCORM or AICC based SCORM files, uh, virtual classroom, classroom, as an activity from the job. So we're big advocates of digital's not here to rule the world. It's let's bring that face-to-face -face element in as well. So the on-the-job activity will allow you to assess someone in the real world. Have they demonstrated the right skills in their practical exercise as an example? Um, so yeah, ideally there's, there's kind of a, a um, activity option for all the different types of learning media you're trying to bring in, you know, PDF, workbooks, PowerPoints, um, and then you bundle all this together in a nice visual learning journey. Thank you. Um, there's a few related questions that have come through um, similar to that as well about how many vendors uh, do we work with to provide the, the courses and the content? Uh, and if they, as a, as a customer, if they work with specific vendors um, who we don't have an existing relationship with, would that content still be able to work within the system? 
So typically, you know, in the LMS world, everything is is SCORM based. So, uh, you know, worst case scenario, you've you've kind of provided with SCORM files that you can upload into into the platform from your provider. Um, but where we work closely with these <clears throat> sort of leading content providers is we we have a clever little sync tool, so we can kind of take that pain away from you and and actually push that content to your platform. So you're not kind of uploading it one by one and putting the details in yourself as administrators. Um, we can actually sort of sync it and keep that library up to date. So yeah, it's kind of good to leverage the um, content providers we've we partner with. But uh, usually it's just a conversation of what content have you got, how what's the easiest way of, of getting that in there. Um, for example, LinkedIn Learning have recently kind of uh, been working with a AICC bit of technology to um, allow it to be linked within platforms where before you used to just kind of land on a on a web page and you had to log in. So, um, but it just tends to be different per provider, such so as understanding who that provider is and, and how to link. Great, thank you. Um, I had one, one more question come in um, about whether it's possible to block learning pathways uh, and opportunities if training flagged as mandatory is incomplete. No, I think it's. Is... I think that's. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, if Charlotte wants to answer that one, that's fine. That's... <laughs> um, yeah, so not only does that relate to the rules, but also the uh, way of restricting and assigning training um, obviously is really important too. So if it is mandatory, um, there is, if you are setting up a programme, for example, uh, like a learning journey, you can actually mark one of those as mandatory. Um, and if it is marked as mandatory, then the learner won't be able to do the other assigned um, journeys until that mandatory one is complete. We also have a functionality where it can launch on the login, so they won't be able to get into the platform until they've completed that mandatory program. Um, so the, yeah, there are other elements of the system um, that we maybe haven't quite touched on in this in this presentation that can be explored as well um, to make sure that mandatory training is completed. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, they are all the questions that have come through uh, for now. So uh, I'm going to start wrapping up just uh, in case any others want to ask a question. There's been a lot of um, questions about our products today. So um, for those of you who are still on the call, when you exit the webinar, you will be displayed a short survey. Um, if you'd like to see a demonstration of the system and how it can work specifically for your needs. Um, in the survey, the, there is an option to say you'd like further information about Cypher Solutions. So if you if you tick that option, um, then somebody from Cypher will be in touch with you uh, just to you know, understand your needs. And if, if we're a good fit for you, then we'll uh, arrange a, a demonstration so you can see how it would work for your specific needs. So I'd encourage you to complete that survey when you lead. Uh, it also helps us to improve our future webinars um, as well. Uh, thank you everyone for attending, uh, specifically for Toby, Charlotte and Andrea for all their work in putting these presentations together. Uh, really enjoyed that and, and for all the, the time that everyone spent answering the questions towards the end. Thank you very much. Um, thanks again for joining us today. I do hope to see you at another Cypher webinar in the future.